hi everybody. It's Jake from Urban here. I'm here today with Katya, the director of projects from Hip V Hype, who's taken some time to tell us about uh, their kind of approach with some of their projects and also what they've got coming up on the radar. So welcome, I guess, to get us started. Do you want to tell us about uh, Hip V Hype, relatively new development company and, and some of the things you can share with us? Sure, yeah, of course. And thanks for having me, Jake. Um, it's good to chat today. So Hip V Hype or Hip Versus Hype um, was founded by Liam Wallace about 15 years ago. Um, but really over the past five years, we've moved into some you know, larger scale projects and also some significant sustainability work. Um, our business focuses on the, de the delivery of development projects, uh, sustainability advice, and we also run a co-working business called the Hip Versus Hype Collective with two studios in the Inner North, one in Carlton North and one in Brunswick. Really simply, um, we, our business exists to, to influence and to help build the safe, sustainable, inspiring future city we feel that we deserve. Um, we think there's a lot of room to move um, for Melbourne into um, high quality, more sustainable apartment developments and townhouses. And that's kind of where we're positioned um, to, to deliver that, that quality project. Um, we, we have a really collaborative business model. Uh, we work with really good people to deliver projects and advice that is more environmentally sustainable, more socially responsible, and more commercially intuitive uh, for a better built environment outcome. So ultimately, we, we feel like it's our responsibility now to leave our cities and regions in a better condition than we found them. So that's kind of our, I guess, driving force in, in you know, what we do every day. Yeah, and I guess it is a, a powerful note that uh, is kind of doing and kind of taking action to those values as well. So you touched on the sustainability elements, the different kind of business models or business services you have there. Um, how do your company values resonate with the demands for the consumers? Yeah, so our, um, our, our business values uh, really simply are people, planet and prosperity. Um, we, we genuinely believe that all three must be in balance in order to deliver really high quality, enduring and sustainable projects for the long term. Um, another thing, I guess, is we really stay true to these values and, and we've, we've noticed a, an increasing proportion of people that also um, are interested in these values, um, either personally or through their work. As an example, our collective work share spaces We've surrounded ourselves with, with uh, businesses that um, take an interest in sustainability and I guess are trying to do their part to, to increase the quality of uh, the built environment. So it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's really great to see an increased number of people really caring about this stuff. Um, and, and this has been really evident in our projects that we launched about three and a half weeks ago in South Melbourne, Faraz and York. Um, it's a great location. It's 100 metres from the South Melbourne market. Uh, it's, it's three tram stops from the city. You know, it has all of those fundamentals. But um, I think the reason why it's been so successful, um, we've sold half of the apartments in three weeks. Um, so out of, out of 22, oh, wow. we've sold 11. Um, and I, I, I really think that one of the big reasons for its success is the underlying values that the project has and that we um, stand by and, and will deliver. And I think people are looking for something more than just, you know, more than just a good location. They're, they're kind of going deeper into who is the developer, what do they care about, what are they delivering? And, and that's really resonated. So I think, yeah, having, having those aligned values with a certain target market has been really, um, really important. Yeah, definitely. I think people are always going to have an element of looking at their uh, like the location they're looking to live, uh, the price point they can work within, but also that uh, kind of sustainability component you've looked at. It's like, is that something you're finding um, is kind of resonating and like there's demand for that across the industry as, as a large or what trends do you see emerging towards that piece? Yeah. So I guess the first thing that I'd say around sustainability is it's, you know, it's not really a new, a new way of thinking. Yes, we are seeing... Um, that more developers are, are, are trying to be more sustainable or at least they're using the word um, on, on their projects. And, yeah. and there is a, a particular movement in the inner north, um, Brunswick, Fitzroy area, where, where projects do have a strong emphasis on this. Um, it's, it's something that's, I guess, 
truly embedded into our approach. And, and when Liam started Hit versus Hype, um, sustainability was, I guess, a core fundamental component of the business. So um, whilst we um, do, do the sustainability and the ESC work on our own projects, um, and for Faraz and York, as an example, the project will be carbon neutral. Um, it will be fossil fuel free in operation, eight star energy rated. Um, and 100% electric. Um, I guess the, the sustainability business is is there right from the very beginning. Um, even when we're looking at development sites, understanding um, really essential um, items such as aspect, um, you know, solar, and um, yeah, en yeah, energy capacity. It's um, it's something that's kind of integrated right from the beginning, as opposed to being a, a tack on for marketing purposes. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the fundamentals still apply location, people care about location, people obviously care about price. Um, but having having those additional um, benefits for people. Um, so living within, you know, a two minutes walk from one of the best markets in Melbourne, you can buy fresh produce as you need it, you reduce your waste, uh, you reduce your carbon footprint. Um, you're more more easily able to walk to places, take public transport, ride your bike as opposed to get in the car. Um, so trying to make it easy for people to make these decisions, um, to live more sustainably. Um, also, a lot of the materials that we source um, locally locally manufactured as well. Um, so I guess the, the whole process um, kind of comes together to provide the most uh, sustainable solution for people that still um, you know, without compromise, it's still beautifully designed um, and, and is also incredibly efficient at the same time. Yeah, awesome. And I think the unique aspect to the projects uh, that you do have are really clearly that you've like worked with partners and kind of unique people that are specialists in each of those spaces. Um, do you want to touch on who you have brought in to collaborate with and, and what kind of extra value those have added to the project? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I guess we're, we're really big believers in, in building long lasting relationships with good people that care about what they do, um, that have similar values to us. Um, so we're always looking to work with people and organisations who value sustainability and recognise the need for positive change. Um, so that's who we're, you know, well aligned with and attracted to work with. So some of our collaborators um, for Faraz and York in particular, we've got Bizug, um, Swiss appliance manufacturer who make um, probably the most efficient appliances uh, in the market. So very well aligned. They became carbon neutral as a business in 2019. And um, I guess, yeah, very much on the same page in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, Great Dane Furniture, long-term collaborator of ours. They've worked with us on, on pretty much all, all of our projects. Um, they have really strong values in you know, building something to last that's enduring, that can be passed down from generation to generation. And yeah. it's not, um, you know, something that you buy and get rid of in five years time. So that, that you know, aligns really, really well with the types of apartments and townhouses that we're trying to design and build is something that almost gets better with age. Uh, cantilever interiors, they are um, kitchen and interior uh, designers and manufacturers. They are doing the kitchens for Faraz and York. And again, they... Uh, we've worked with them on a number of projects before. Um, we actually collaborated on a on a new kitchen, um, which was basically a prototype for for the kitchen that's coming into this project um, in our studio in Brunswick. So, yeah. really collaborative approach. We you know we get to throw ideas around, give them feedback. Um, their their warehouse where they actually make the kitchens is literally just up the road from us. So yeah, it's a really kind of hands on process, which is great. Um, Bink Windows, another big big collaborator of ours, um, they make um, European style tilt and turn windows, yeah. um, all double glaze, really solid, really big component of making an efficient apartment or home. Um, so yeah, that they, they we we put their windows into Nightingale Two, Ruskin Elwood, um, and uh, our own studios as well. So big uh, yeah, long term collaborator. Uh, Broadwear, um, based up in Sydney, family business, they're doing all the tapware. Um, we've used them a number of times, really great business, beautiful design, and they've also got a really strong focus on reducing um, waste through the way that they create tap, 
tap where Liam and I have been up to Sydney, um, seen the warehouse, and they've got some pretty amazing kind of processes in place. They've um, they've got a style of electroplating that has zero waste. It's yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and then Robert Gordon, actually a new new collaborator on this project for us in York, um, they're making the the basins um, for all, all of the bathrooms. Uh, again, family run business um, based in Victoria, make really beautiful product um, here. It's local, and you know just deeply care about what they do. Um, so yeah, it's we we really value kind of building these relationships and bringing them along through multiple projects and. Um, it's it's great. One one of the purchases in Faraz New York has already had a cantilever kitchen. I absolutely love it, and it's kind of, I actually think it's one of the biggest reasons why they bought into this project was because yeah. you know they felt a sense of um, like they already knew what they were going to get. They know that they're going to get quality um, through um, these um, designers and manufacturers that we've specified. So yeah, that's kind of how we how we like to run it. Yeah, exciting. And uh, I guess with that, uh, 2020 hasn't panned out exactly what everyone thought when we we're sitting there in January. Uh, so we're into June now. Um, what, uh, what else do you have kind of as upcoming milestones uh, for the year that we can look out for? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely an interesting year. Um, we, I mean, things are, things are tracking really well for this project. We, we're planning on starting um, demolition end of June um, and construction in August. So kind of steaming ahead with Faraz New York. Um, this is due to be finished in early 2022. We are um, actively working on another project in the inner north, um, which I just can't say too much about right now, but yeah. I guess we're, we've definitely found our, our sweet spot in the types of projects we want to be delivering. Um, it's around that 20 to a 30 apartment scale, we think, it, it creates really, um, really great community. It's, it's the type of scale that people want to live in, um, particularly owner occupiers, you know, that aren't looking at a hundred plus apartments. They're looking at these more boutique scale projects. So yeah, that's very much on our road radar. Um, and then sustainability, we're doing some really interesting work um, for local government and state councils now, um, particularly around um, declaring climate emergency. What does a cl climate emergency plan look like? How do we actually um, implement that? So, yeah, I guess trying to kind of piece together elements of sustainability, feeding that into projects. And hopefully uh, next month we can get the collective uh, work share up and running again, which is exciting. Um, I think people are looking forward to getting back into it and collaborating once again and, um, yeah, kind of bringing some normalcy back, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And uh, in the meantime, we're waiting for that normalcy to come back. Appreciate doing this over Zoom that many people are adopting, adapting to at the moment. Um, heaps of details you've shared with us on your projects, particularly uh, across what's happening in the industry with sustainability. We'll put a whole heap of links uh, below this video for people to jump on and find more on plenty of those uh, details you've outlined in this. But thanks again for taking the time catching up with us today. Great. Thank you very much, Jake.